In other words, the implication was that sometimes everybody in the same room have a spirit, but it's not necessarily the spirit for that moment, for that time. But God will give you something extra special that when the challenges of life arrive, when everybody else has a regular spirit, because of what God has for you to do, he gives you a, another spirit that's different from everybody else's spirit. So that when you get the negative report from the doctor, because you got another spirit, you don't fold up and crumble and, and hide under the sheets because you have another Judith had another spirit. another spirit. And when the 12 tribes went out, they all saw giants in the land. You, you, you know the story. That's why, you know, I'm, I'm tired. I was up till 6 this morning trying to hang out with the sisters. Yeah, and you know, don't, don't hang out with praying women. I didn't get to bed until after 6 and I had an appointment at 9 o'clock this morning. And I got to preach three more messages tomorrow. One in Brooklyn where I'm, you know, concentrating on pastor and everything. So, so I'm dragging now, so I can't get along because I'm... <laughs> I'm tired, but so I don't want to make a whole lot of contact with the spirit because the spirit has a way of re-energizing you. <laughs> you know, so we, we, we're, gonna, we're not going to talk until we get anointed or excited. We, we... And, and so these 12 brothers went out and spied out the land. And you know the story. Ten came back and said, you know, the guess there are giants in the land. And we are as in their sights as grasshoppers. Now, how are you going to interpret how other people perceive you? You're testifying for how they see you. It doesn't matter how folks see you. It's how you see yourself. They can see you as a grasshopper all they want. But you got to know in whom you serve. And you got to know that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So it don't really matter about what you think. And I don't have problems no more about how you think about me and, and, and how you feel about me. That used to bother me. But it don't make another mind anymore about how you feel about me. What you See, I, I've learned to get along anyhow. Whether you love me, like me or not, it's, it, it, it's okay. It's really okay. And so when they got back, Caleb and Joshua, they had what the Bible called a positive report. When God speaks to you in the light, mm -hmm. and you get a dark situation, such as you see giants, just because the giants now represent darkness, mm -hmm. don't ever challenge in the, in the darkness what God told you in the light. He said that the land belongs to you. Now just because there are giants occupying the land, it does not change God's word. He said, I'm going to give you Canaan. And you got to know that if God said I'm giving it to you, you might as well take it to the bank. You, that's why we don't wait till the battle is over. Because if God says it, we can go ahead and dance and shout and, and praise God. Now we ain't waiting until we actually did it because God spoke and we got it in the spirit. You know, to me, to have it in the spirit yes. is as good as having it in, 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 when it actually happens. So you wait until you actually did. Absolutely. But if God spoke it in your spirit, you might, you might as well dance and shout now. Because it's yours. Yes. And Caleb believed what God said. We, we need more folks today that will take God at his word. People of faith that just believe God, that if God said it, I'm crazy enough to believe it because God said it. And, and, and so all 12 spies went out. And check this out. They all saw the same thing. They all saw the giants. They all saw the grapes and, and the land forward looking honey. But it, it's not what you see. We, we, they saw the same thing. But it's how you interpret it. And if you're serving a great God, you will see what everybody else sees. But the difference is that I'm serving a great God. And so it doesn't matter what I see and what you see. I just have to know that God is able. He's able to do things and make ways. 
that you may not have ever seen before. And so the Bible says that Caleb had another spirit. And sometimes that spirit comes down from your father. Because his father's name was Yes, yes, yes. And Jephanu means it shall appear. And you heard about generational curses. Well, they're generational blessings. And so what was in the father came down to the son. Jephthah knew the father of Caleb was a man of faith. And the word translated Jephthah knew means it shall appear. And you got to believe that whatever God said, no matter how difficult, how dark it looks, it's going to appear. And to be a traveler, extensive traveler the way Judith was, you have to be a person of faith. You don't know how many pastors and so-called bishops and preachers I speak to, and I talk to them about the foreign field. Uh -huh. what, what, what Judy Bromley was doing. Talk about it. And that's why I had to be here today because she was a woman after my own heart. Yes, yes, yes. And, and you get pastors and preachers, well, God didn't call me to the fourth. Well, what did he call you for? The Bible says going to the heavens and the highways. Don't, don't stop in, in, in Uniondale and Hinstead and Rose of He said going to the highways and hedges everywhere. You don't just stop. But they're afraid to get on the airplane. But Judy was not afraid. She was the one. She went to Uganda. I was in Uganda. Uh -huh. She went to Ghana. I was in Ghana. Uh -huh. And I knew had she still been there because we had talked already about some of my trips. I took uh, two trips to Ethiopia. I've been to the Philippines. I've been to India a, a couple of times. I've been to Nigeria and, and, and Ghana and, and Kenya. You, you name it. I've been to Africa nine times, different, different places. And India twice, the Philippines, Haiti a couple of times with, with Pastor Roy over here. So, so you got to believe that wherever you go, God will take care of you. <laughs> If I serve this God that I preach about, that he's able to do all things, why am I afraid to get on the air? I, I'm sorry, I'm about to sit in here. I'm sorry, I apologize. Because I know I'm talking to some of y'all in here that when you get on the plane, you get scared. But if you're on the plane with me, God will keep the plane up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep you on the plane with you. Ruby, you'll be all right. You ain't got to worry no more. Because God will keep the plane afloat just because you on the plane. And the reason why a lot of jobs are not winning the bankruptcy and folded and went out of business because there's a saint of God who's on the job. And God is preserving that job. Hallelujah. And so the, the first real uh, tourists or uh, missionaries were, were the 12 spies. And, and if you ever get to Israel, I've been to Israel 10 times, by the way. And, and uh, if you ever get there, you'll you see different signs on taxi cabs. And there's one sign on a taxi cab with, with two guys representing Caleb and, and, and Joshua. And, and they're carrying a rod of, of, of grapes, the fruit, the, the produce of the land. So they were the first uh, uh, two real tourists that went to their own land, Caleb. So they were always foreign missionaries, so to speak. They believed in traveling because that's the only way you're going to find out what's on the other side. Yeah. Right, How many of y'all know there's something more than hymns there? We, we got folk who are born and die in Roosevelt and never see anything else. And many of them call themselves missionaries. They're missionaries on Nassau Road and Greenwich Road, and, and they have never done anything greater. No, no great challenges. But guess what? It takes another spirit to be to move beyond Hempstead and Freeport and Union. Though it takes another spirit. God gives you a, a spirit that wants to extend you further. He has a great work that He wants to do in your life, but you got to allow Him to do it. And, and, and so uh, Jeffrey knew the father of Caleb named uh, his son Caleb. And Caleb means, if you read the third paragraph mm -hmm. in the biography uh, of Judith Brambo, it says that she was unwavering. Mm -hmm. In other words, she was steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the work of the law. And, and, and so you, you, you have to be persistent and she was relentless. That's in the third paragraph. I didn't just make that was the kind of person she was. Well, Caleb means to be steadfast. And check this out. In the Greek, it means to be have a dog-like disposition. You know what a dog is like, right? When a dog gets hold of a bone, 
Yeah, yeah. He didn't let him go. And, and that's how Judy was. She got hold of a vision. She began to be, have faith in God. And you know what faith means? F A I T H. Mm -hmm. F for forsaken. A for all. I for I. T for take. And H for him. Let me give it to you straight, real quick. I don't have much time. Forsaking all, I take him. Amen. That was Judas' attitude. Forsaking all, I take him. Even if it takes me to a distant land on an airplane, wherever I got to go, the hedges, the highway, I'll be there. Why? Because I have faith in God. And when you got faith in God, and, and God gives you a revelation, God gives you a vision, and you get hold of that vision, that revelation, you like a dog. You won't let it go. And she went to her grave holding on to the vision and to the word of God. And that's how Caleb was when they tried to discourage him. But he had another spirit. And when you get another spirit, you're not, you're not easily discouraged like everybody else. Because you're hearing from God. And people with another spirit. By the way, he was from the tribe of Judah. And, and, and that's a group of people that you don't, you don't mess with. Yeah, because they see things differently than everybody else. You know, the, 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 the sun rises in the east. And when they were setting up the tabernacle in the wilderness, and every time they were moving, the, the tribes would encamp around the tent. Well, in the front of the tent facing the east was the tribe of Judah. Oh, oh you missed it. You didn't get it. I'm sorry. Let me say it again. Yeah, yeah. So, so the, the tribe of, in, of, of Judah was in the east. The sun rises in the east. So the people who praise God. Oh, I got to break this down. I don't have the time. I don't have the time. The people who are in the east, where the tribe of, east, of, of Judah was, and the sun rises in the east. So the people that's in the east. In other words, the praisers see the sun rise before everybody else. And some people got to wait to see the full sun come out. But when you are a praiser and you see God just beginning to do something, you don't wait for the whole sun to come out. You begin to, all I see is a little tip of the sun. But I'm a praiser and I wait for the full sun to come out. I believe that I see a little tip of the sun coming out. I praise the more what I I praise him for the little bit that I see. And if I praise him for the little bit, I believe God will take me to the next level. How many of y'all praise in the house? Praise in the house. Hallelujah. And Caleb was a praiser from the tribe of Judah. And the Bible says that he had a whole other spirit. Get me around somebody with another spirit. When, when, when things are going down and I'm discouraged and I don't feel like doing something, I'm in disrepair. Get me by a praiser. That's why pastors and for many pastors in here, you got to be careful what kind of ushers you put in the door. Because people coming to the church upset, this church is bound. And you got some usher at the door with an attitude that don't know how to greet the people. You need a praiser. You need a praiser at the door to the church. So when people come in, Somebody will give, begin to give God the glory. Give God the praise. I know it may not look good, but it's not according to how it looks. I just know that the God that I serve is able. That no matter what you're going through, He will deliver. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Judith was a praiser. When she came to my church, I knew she was there. Because yeah. she couldn't sit down on the wall. On the soul of line, she was a praiser. Get around a praiser. They're different people. And God responds to the praises. When David said, my cup running over, David was a praiser. He said, my cup running over. Their cup is... I wish I had a witness in here. I would be finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's because of the visionariness of Caleb. I'm, I'm finished now. Because he was a visionary. He trusted and he had faith in God. He was unswerving. Yes, my God. Moses, when he sent them out, had promised them Hebron. When they started dividing up the land, when yes, they finally yes, got yes, yes. 
uh, and they took over the land in, in Canaan. And they finally got to the area where it was being divided up. But now Moses had gone up the sea. But he had promised Caleb a certain piece of land called Hebron. And so when Joshua now is dividing up the land that they've just gotten into, and all the tribes of oh God, Hallelujah. Hey. all the tribes are lined up Hallelujah. in the order of their birth, <laughs> waiting to get that piece of the land, they're all lined up in the order of their birth. Yes. But here come Caleb. Here come Caleb. <laughs> he was about to seven down. Caleb went to the front of the line. You know, God plays checkers. That's it. Yes, he does. You, come here, brother, for a second. Come here. Come here. The, the, the Bible says that the first shall be last. And the last shall be first. So, so, so get behind me now. But pretend you're a praise. I don't know if you really are. But the Bible says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Amen. So right now, he's last. But when God gets through with the situation, and he turns the situation around, I was first. But when God turns the situation around, he was last. But now he's first. Because God, God plays checkers, and he'll jump over the situation. He'll jump over the person that's in front of you, because you are praiser. And the praises make the difference. You can see that. You can see that. You might make me preach more. Hallelujah. So Joshua's giving out the piece of the land. Caleb is back here. Waiting in line. But then he realized who he was. I'm the one with another spirit. Caleb left from where he was. And went up to the front of the line. And he says, you, this is, you got to go to Joshua chapter 14. Yes, 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 I was in Numbers 13, yes, 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 but to find this story, to yes, follow it down, you got to go to Joshua chapter 14. So in Joshua chapter 14, they're dividing up the land. Yes, and, and, and Caleb goes from the back, comes to the front. Uh -huh. And says, wait a second, Joshua, you remember what Moses said? <laughs> this is 45 years. Yes. Oh, God, help me. This is 45 years later. And God has not forgotten. How many of y'all been waiting on some stuff and you think that God has forgotten about you? But the devil is a liar. God is not. 45 years later, because of his faithfulness, because of his dedication, before, because of his commitment, he jumped the line. Hallelujah. I'm finished now. But the reason why he jumped the line, he knew who he was. And praises, check this out. Praises don't wait in line. Praises don't stand in line. 